The phone number is 559-726-1200, and then you put the PIN number in, 111106. Four ones and then a zero six pound. I get. I just grabbed my pen. Would you get it one more time? Five five nine. Yes. Five five nine seven two six twelve hundred. Oh, twelve hundred. And what do I punch in after that? And then the pen is one 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 zero six pound. Four ones and then a zero six pound. And that would put me uh, uh, on the telephone. Okay. Correct. And uh, do you have those calls on what day do you have those? Well, Sunday and Wednesday, unless Sunday. there's a special announcement. Sunday and Wednesday, what time? 9 o'clock Eastern. No, 8 o'clock. Yeah, oh, excuse me, 8 o'clock like, Eastern, yeah. 8 o'clock This Eastern. more than likely is the last call that I'm going to do. Okay. Okay. When you understand the documents that I just put up here, and I've got a additional item that I'm putting on to the documents that I'll go over tonight, that now when you understand these documents, you'll see where you stand in the authority, and basically you're on your way out of the system. Good. Thanks a lot for answering this question. Okay. Okay, I'm going to mute, and I'll listen. I'm going to listen. Oh, we've got six on now, Patrick. Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna go on to the uh, group site and see what he's posting, because I just got home a few minutes ago. Yeah, I, just posted a note. I just posted a note over there. Yeah, you posted four up there this morning, right, Tom? Yes. I actually did it in two versions. Uh, when I uh, run it through character recognition, uh, Adobe Acrobat turns your flow chart sideways. So it, uh, I did it one uh, with the flow chart sideways so it's easier to read, and then one with the flow chart th the other way so it's easier to print. Yeah, it should be in, uh, uh, what the hell is that? Uh, page layout orientation. It should be in landscape. <coughs> Yeah, that one. Well, when it came to me over the facts, it was all portrait mode, turned sideways. Oh, uh, it should have been, uh, yeah, it well, should have been portrait mode, uh, but it really is uh, laid out in landscape. Right. Uh, but when it comes across, it's just landscape, but when I run it through Adobe, it turns that one page into landscape. Uh, you can't do that. That's why I told you, you should have just uh, printed that out clipped off the top, and then just put it back in as a PDF. Okay. Uh -oh. Okay. So it's up there in both. It's up there in both versions with a notation in okay. case to, to see which one it is. Yeah, basically there's only two places you have to put your name in and then sign it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everything else should be pretty much normal, except unless you don't have, uh, like a woman doesn't have the uh, military uh, vessel. They would only have two, the church and the state. Right. Uh, a caller from area 845 and making a lot of noise. I'll put you on mute. How many okay. you got on there now? Uh, it's the same set, seven. 
Okay. Uh, well, he's trying to get on, but uh, I understand this problem. Okay. Well, I'm getting a little time here then. He wasn't sure he was going to be able to be on it with getting access to the computer. That was the problem. Okay. Okay, we might as well go ahead and start then. Okay. Yeah, it's Hopefully you got the recording. You got it going? Go ahead. Yeah, the recording's already on. Okay. Uh, basically, hopefully you guys have these documents pulled up and are looking at them, okay? Uh, the yeah. one that uh, basically has uh, going to uh, the U.S. Federal District dash U.S. Marshal Bay Lees, okay, that document, uh, I had Admiralty Puppeteer in there twice, okay, you have to know what Admiralty really is, and it's not what all the law dictionaries say, there's more to that Admiralty, just like the word American, uh, doesn't say everything what an American is. A mayor is a prince or of a sultan, a king, or a god. I, individual, can, one who has understanding. Admiralty is broken down somewhat in similar capacity in that a mayor is basically the prince of the sultan, the sovereign, or whatever, and then operating in uh, the sea of commercial commerce. Now, whatever the sea is, uh, or not in the sea of commercial commerce, but in the sea of commerce. Now, whether you have it in the commercial commerce seas, and that is maritime, when you're under maritime commerce, that is commercial commerce. But the admiralty, the emir, the prince, is the one that has jurisdiction in those uh, seas of either commercial or uh, straight commerce. And that's what admiralty really is. You have to go into some old, uh, I don't know whether it's in Webster's uh, big, thick dictionary, but I found it in uh, Oxford Universal 1933 dictionary. You have to learn how to break these words down. I've tried to tell you that before. So, I added into the additional items down below, this action is based on the following, and then number four, additional documentary evidence, documentary evidence is, the word, right. yeah, any uh, recording, writing, or other uh, item that can be presented as evidence and the thing itself speaks as the witness in a case. That's what documentary evidence is. 
and I listed the Bible, Moby Dick, and Mutiny on a Bounty. I also now added the Merchant of Venice, hmm. because basically the prince is the one that is sitting in charge of that court that is going on in the Merchant of Venice. And you are the prince of America. You the living. And you are the puppeteer over your puppet, your corporate soul person. So, underneath the executed uh, by the uh, present master of the vessel, my vessels, I put an additional line down there and said, under the American Admiralty, start over again, under the American Admiralty Puppeteer's Signature and Seal of Authority, by wine, and then I put Mr. Patrick semicolon divine. I will put my thumbprint and my, uh, if, uh, since I am an embosser, I'll put in on there too. Now I have just sealed this document. Concurring that I am over my puppet that I have as the master of my vessels or of the vessels. But I am the prince in the process. But we have to give the authority, and that's where we stand over, and even on the faxes that I'm sending into uh, the Federal Maritime Commission, the Federal District Court, and uh, to the U.S. Uh, Marshal uh, Department of Bailey's, I'm going to put down below there, where I had executed on and then executed by, below that I'm going to put my under American puppeteer signature and seal of authority by, and then my name, the man's name, okay, the living man's name, Mr. Patrick, which is also my fictionary, uh, or not my fictionary, but my real uh person, man, son of man, son of God, whatever, because my God is my spirit, my spirit of understanding. I have my own God. Everybody has their own God. And that is your spirit of life. You all have different understandings and everything else, but you're all basically classified as a prince or princess of America. Now, a woman is supposed to be under the protection of her husband, her father, or her dead husband. But they have expounded and allowed uh, assets to go out so that they can pilfer these assets away from you in the maritime system. That's what's happened in the process. And then women don't understand uh, the commercial uh, system out here really any better than most men do but they've lost their protections that they used to have. Now you have to fight for your protections. I told you I went through Title 46, and I went through and did a search by numerous different words in there to find out how they were being used in Title 46. 
Whaling was one of them. And I told you that basically in that process, there were certain exemptions that fell under fishing vessels, whaling vessels, and yachts. I told you that a fishing vessel is essentially a sea farming vessel, sort of like a tractor on the farm, on the land. That's why, in a lot of cases, it is exempt from a lot of the other items that are listed in Title 46. The whaling vessel, there is no whaling fleet in America. Essentially, whaling has been banned in America. So what is this whaling vessel that they're talking about? It's the maritime whaling vessel of commercial commerce that is going out after the living man and woman as the whales in the sea of commercial commerce. And then yachts are normally in the private. They're normally private recreation, recreational vehicles or vessels. So that's why those three items are exempt from most of the seagoing rules and regulations that are in Title 46. But you have to look at when that is being used as an exemption in there because certain things do apply. And that's what basically the trickery is, is that they've hidden those in the process. Someone that works on a fishing vessel someone, a seaman or whatever, that works on a uh, whaling vessel and someone that works on a yacht is entitled to their wages. And that's covered in Title 46. But other items are not covered under for those three vessels. They're exempted from them. I get tired of arguing with people. They look at one item and say, well, basically, this, this is exempt for everything then. No, it's not. And then people haven't taken the time to even listen to the calls that I've made that I've tried to explain this to people. They haven't read the definitions that I've posted up there to try and understand them. And then people get uh, irate when I blow my stack. <laughs> Say, this guy is a total lunatic. No, I'm just pissed. And there's a big difference. I know what the hell I'm talking about. A lunatic doesn't. Mm -hmm. You can turn around and put these things in. And when you come in with the right authority you're going to have and get out of the system. The master of these th vessels, two or three vessels that you have, there has been no master of the vessel, so you're out at sea. But you're the chief master's mate. You have to claim the mastership and bring the ship back into port.
That's what one court told this one person. You're still out at sea. Hmm. He didn't understand it. I tried to explain to him. But then he gets off on other tangents and starts rambling and doesn't understand what the hell I'm saying. And I tried to explain it to him and told him, hey, you've got to listen to the calls. And most of you people really do not know how to read between the lines. You don't know how to use the computer. Okay? I've told you that the computer was a means to basically research items. Title 46, if you pull down the text version of it, it is almost... 1,555 pages. Hmm. You're not going to sit there and read that whole damn document and understand it. Because there is, and I've taken the sections and pulled out the statute part of it out and had Tom post some of those up there in the form of maybe three, four, maybe even up to eight pages. Well, if you had all the rest of the garbage that was in there, the history and uh, everything else that was listed in there, it would be 30, 40, 60 pages. And it would confuse you in a lot of cases. So I tried to streamline some of this stuff down for you. I'm not trying to hide anything from you. You can still pull the whole document down and read the whole thing if you want to. But it's done it. since I know you really don't know how to read between the lines because most people can't even read the Bible and understand what it means. They don't understand the stories. I mean, numerous times it's talked about uh, like Jonah in the whale being swallowed up. Well, he was swallowed up into the sea of commercial commerce. He had to come out of it. Mm-hmm. And that's what the rough seas are. That's what all these depressions and inflations are caused out here. The unemployment and everything else is caused by the bankers using commercial inflation and deflation. Hoarding the money and putting the money into circulation at different times to control the people. But if you're operating out there in just commerce, they have no control over you. You're now free. And you will be free once you take control of your vessels and liquidate them. Just like in the movie Wizard of Oz. The wizard says, Oh, you liquidated her. Mm. Well, a vessel is called a her. Because she is a depository. It carries cargo. And a female is a depository also. A male deposits something into the female to get a return. That's why they call a vessel a her. The wicked witch of the west and the wicked witch of the east. But see, Dorothy only had two that she had to contend with. Because 
she wasn't in the military. They never did bring in the witch of the South. You had the good witch of the North. Which is the one that points upward towards your spiritual control. Your God. Your spirit that created you. Your spirit of understanding. You see, Dorothy was a female. She only had two vessels to worry about. She took control of the ruby slippers from the first vessel. And then she got the broomstick from the second vessel. Moby Dick, basically, was written in 1851, prior to Lincoln taking office. Uh, I forget, Buchanan, I think, was before him. And see, they both knew what was coming about. They tried to put barriers up against what was getting ready to take place, this whaling that the European monarchs and the bankers were getting ready to do. They tried to put some buffer zones in there. They kept it in a buffer zone situation until uh, 1887 when they brought uh, liability insurance into this country. And then under Roosevelt, uh, or under... uh, Wilson, they started bringing in the Federal Reserve Bank into this country. Now, pretty much one Federal Reserve dollar equaled one silver dollar all the way up until in the 1960s. And then Nixon basically took us off the gold standard And all hell broke loose in the monetary system, in the inflationary system out here. And basically, they started the wages for the people really went down. It did not go up. When you figured in the conversion factor of Federal Reserve dollars to one silver dollar. There's a whole bunch of information that I've tried to uh, bring forward over the years out here to wake you people up, okay? It was not, this wasn't all for my benefit, but basically it was because in a lot of cases when I talk and I get to rambling, my little computer brain start spitting out data that I haven't seen at some time. Sometimes I have to go back and listen to the call and say, hey, I said that. Mm -hmm. And then I get to looking at it and I say, hey, that just drew a whole new perspective on it. Now I need to look at that item. Just like the other night when I said, that basically we send this into the chief judge who we thought was supposed to be the master of these vessels for the district that we're in. And I said, we send this in after three days. If we don't hear from them, then we go to the Maritime Commission and tell them that we are assuming the position of master of that vessel. Well, we don't have to wait for that. The judges have already told us this. That master 
of the vessel has been vacated ever since at the latest when we turned 25. In some cases of some of these vessels, it was terminated before the age of 25. But the age of 25 is when you become a full-fledged master. You have completed your apprenticeship, your journeymanship. Your apprenticeship is from 18 to 20, from birth to 21 in the state system. In the religious system, it is from uh, birth to 12 years old. And then in the state system, you have a time frame of 21 to 25. That is called your journeymanship. But you're still the chief slash master's mate. So you're under, you're the first officer under the master. Now at the age of 25, you become the master. You're supposed to become the master, and you're supposed to assume the command of that vessel. You're supposed to be totally free, just like what the Constitution says. At the age of 25, you can represent another man. Well, to represent another man, you have to be totally free. You cannot have any outside influences to control you. So basically all these representatives that are out here in Congress and everything, they're not free at the present time. They're all controlled. Mm -hmm. They've never claimed their vessels. They're paying income taxes. They have Social Security accounts. They're in the maritime system. They have licenses. They, they are a numbered individual. So they are not in the master's position. A master does not have a number. And then a master will terminate these vessels in maritime service. Because all of these vessels are operated in maritime or commercial commerce, not just commerce. And basically, we, as the living son of God or son of our spirit, or sultan, or whatever. We are the prince, the emir, the emir. And that's why I put the Merchant of Venice into uh, that reference, is because the merchant in the court, the prince, was the one who was sitting in authority. You go into a court of admiralty. You are the prince of Venice sitting in that damn court. But you're the prince of America sitting in that court action. So, that's about the only change that I had uh, in going in with these uh, documents, uh, the page two, and uh, the cover sheet, and uh, the flow chart. I didn't really change anything on the flow chart. I left it pretty much in the other, in the fax cover sheet, and uh, the... Uh, document 
that I'm sending it to the U.S. Marshals. That page two. But I'm going to send a copy of all three pages that I sent to the U.S. Marshals and to the Chief Judge and also to the Maritime Commission. We stand over them. They're all elected or they're appointed officials. They're public servants. We're the prince of the land. We need to start acting like it. But we are the puppeteer over our puppet, who is the commercial or the corporate soul person. Our front man. Then we will have basically admiralty slash maritime protective documents issued for admiralty free and safe travel, harbor, and commerce trade. Not commercial commerce because we're going to get the hell out of that damn system. That is an enemy to anybody that is uh, out here. Insurance is one of the biggest rip-offs there ever was. And basically, you can take uh, that from with a grain of sand. When you go to Vegas and you play blackjack, and the dealer has a 10 or something showing, and they ask you, do you want to take insurance? The percentage is 17 percent that you're going to lose. So it's a bad bet. You want the best odds in Vegas are at the Baccarat table. It is almost one to one. The bank gets a little better rate on it but you have to pay a VIG or a commission if you're betting on the bank. But that's the best odds in Vegas. I know this because I've played just about every game there is out in Vegas, and I know just about all the odds. I've walked. Every aspect of this whole system, wagering, you name it, system. I've had whole life insurance policies. I've taken loans against them. I've seen how these insurance shysters operate. They're worse than the IRS. You owe no taxes upon your labor. That is in the law. So you got to figure out where these taxes are coming from and who really owes these taxes. They're all over in the maritime on the vessels. Under the seamen, or the merchant marine man. They're the ones that are owing the taxes. That they've got bonds and everything else written against. Insurance policies. The states are the biggest whores in this country. Everybody complains about the government out in Washington, D.C., but they don't see how all they're losing all their rights and, and uh, protections to the states. 
You have the right of free travel in this country. So where does the state get the right to come in and say you've got to have a driver's license? They don't. They're operating in total fraud. That is a mutiny against the living. In the movie, Mutiny on the Bounty. Even in the Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay? Jack Sparrow was the captain of the vessel. Who committed committed mutiny against him? His first mate. It even says that in the movie. And the first mate in all of these contracts, especially under the Selective Service and the Certificate of Live Birth, is the state of. That is the whore that is committing the mutiny. Because they're trying to fleece more funds out of the seamen on board the vessel, causing harm to the master and to the master's mate, you, in the process. You're a fictional person. And then it all rolls down to you because you don't know that you're the puppeteer in the background and that you have control over this. And that's why any court case, you take it into admiralty. You never will allow the state to have control over you because they're just a first mate. They're under you all along. But they're going to try and rip you off. See, they were supposed to be In 1933, when this all took place, they were supposed to be turning around and getting paybacks from the federal government. From the taxes that went into there. Then they were supposed to be fed back to the states. But no, the states got greedy and saw that they could rip the people off just like everybody else out here was doing. The commercial banks, private banks, and everything else. And the insurance companies. Oh, shit, let's get in on this. This is a gravy train. So, okay, open it up for questions. Now, I want questions. And if you don't respond in a timely manner, basically this call will be terminated. I'm not going to stick around and uh, listen to extra garbage or anything else. I got a question, Patrick. Okay. Uh, On this uh, document, you are an American Admiralty of Age you know, number two, you say that um, you have to enter as the chief master's mate of the foreign vessel until you terminate your hirings at will by waking up. The hiring at will, is that something we want to terminate our hirings at will, or is that the same as the uh, summary court-martial? No, forget the summary court-martial. We're not going to go there. We're taking control of the vessel, okay? Right. No, I figured there was a difference there. Yeah. Okay. And that uh, you are the admiralty, the American admiralty, when of age. Okay? Right. And basically, like I said, a mayor and admiral, okay, are both prince. So you're the prince prince out here. Right. Both of those words are for the prince. 
And see, that's where we have the authority. That's why court, you take your court case into admiralty, you don't pay a filing fee because you're coming in as the prince. Right, right. You're moving it in, and you're going to be standing in as the prince, but even though you're being the puppeteer over your puppet who's going into the court case because you're not down below, okay? Right. You're going to have your puppet down below. It's all on a stage. That court is nothing but a stage. Mm -hmm. And you're standing as the puppeteer behind the screen. Right. And then the next line, it says, the other thing is to put in admiralty, underscore, you know, bold letters, in admiralty, at the bottom of the right-hand column. Is that... This is only if you're going into a court case. Right. Okay? Right. But you do you do this last stuff, and basically this is going to shut down all your court cases. Right. Because you're going into the bailiffs, the U.S. Marshal bailiffs, U.S. bailiffs. Right. And all these court cases are going to be flagged against that bailiff who's over these vessels. Okay. Not the bay, not wait, not the bailiff, the bailee. Okay? In the US Marshals Department, there are two departments. The bailiffs, which are the enforcers and go out and do the seizures and everything, and then the baileys, which are the accountants. Okay. And that's the one who is holding our uh, cargo is the Baileys. Right. Yeah, that's key information right there. Yeah. But see that? Uh, you are the American Admiralty, one of age. That document is uh, basically, what, over a week old or so, and I've changed several things. Okay. And see? Uh, we were as hirings at will, and see, we did not have a total free will until we wake up at the age of 25. We we're supposed to have free will. Most people out here still don't have free will. <laughs> They're all being controlled either by family, by government, or by uh, the religious groups, or by... Uh, uh, friends and neighbors. Yeah, right, even they though, don't have free will. They're being controlled. This is what you're supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. No, that isn't giving you free will. You have the right to choose what you know is right and wrong. And 90% of what they're telling you is totally wrong. Because they have no real understanding of what really is right. They just been, they believe the lies. Right, they want you to blend in with the herd. Yeah. And basically the herd is going over the cliff into the Grand Canyon. Right. It is. Okay, any other questions? Uh, the, your puppeteer signature, there's no need to put that on the flowchart page. No. I'm not, okay. I didn't have enough room to put it on there, so I'm not going to put it on there. Okay. It'll be covered on uh, basically when you put it on page two and you've got it on the PAX cover sheet. Okay, very good. Thank you. The flow chart is basically a simple, uh, pretty much a simple statement of understanding. It really explains things well. I tried to lay it out 
so that I had the understanding and then I hoped that other people would uh, see what I was talking about. Well, it shows how similar these three vessels are. And then when you see and read the different things and listen to uh, different sections of the Bible, uh, the Old Testament primarily, and even some of the New Testament out here, uh, then you can see the correlation that, that, that the Bible comes into this process. And then you've got the different movies, and basically I could list probably about 50 different movies that have a lot of different connotations as documentary evidence. I'm going to have to watch that uh, Merchant of Venice one. I haven't seen that. Cal, I talked about that, what, over a year ago? Right, but I have a... Uh, I didn't have a DVD player, but I could probably find it on the Internet. Yeah, yeah if you go in, I told you before, if you go into the torrent engines, you got to remember, 99% of all these movies and everything else, they put all this fraudulent stuff about copy and everything, but as long as you are using it for information, okay, it's already paid for. Right. It's in a pre, this is in a, in a sense, in a prepaid system. But just like the banks, they turn around and put additional service charges if you go five cents over draft in your damn account to charge you $35 or whatever. It's all fraud. Right. They have access to your assets as soon as you basically establish that bank account. And when you write on a check, there's two different items on there. The key one that the banks use primarily is the line that has dollars behind it not the one that has the dollar sign in front of it. Uh, the amount written it. out in uh, holographically. In handwriting, when you write out the actual value, right. it's in dollars, and that is in lawful currency. Silver dollars. Where... The number up behind the dollar sign is in Federal Reserve dollars. So you're allowing the Federal Reserve and the bankers to go in and basically draw out silver dollars out of your account with the handwritten section on there. And then they're only giving you an exchange rate of one Federal Reserve dollar to one silver dollar. When the present exchange rate is roughly about 16 and a half. That's the banking fraud that's going on out here. So once I get out of the system, Patrick, uh, I'd like to find out more about the Babylonian system. I don't understand that at all. Uh, or the Babylonian or... system is what you're operating in right now, the maritime system. Well, okay. The commercial system of insurance and fraudulent banking, fraudulent bartering. Okay. That's the Babylonian system. I was interested in the history of it when I had time to read history. A, a system of confusion and idol worshiping. 
and graven images. Right. And it's all about money. Commerce. Commercial commerce. Dead Definitely. commerce. Definitely. Yeah, you're worshiping a dead or a debt instrument. And they changed the languages to mix up the languages. The father changed them so because of all the idol worship and the commerce and all that. Yes. And they see, I mean, people out here, they worship that Federal Reserve dollar. They think that that's, that's it. They don't realize that they're really getting ripped off constantly. Most of the people in this country are working for less wages than some of the people in foreign countries. Everybody doesn't realize that hell, gasoline went in town today, gasoline's down to dollar eighty five. Most people don't realize that basically that dollar eighty five is only about uh fifteen, seventeen cents in silver dollar value in nineteen sixty value. That's what the gas wars were back in 1960, was down to 18 cents a gallon. I think that's about the lowest I ever saw it. Might have been lower in some other areas. So the commodity rates really haven't changed over the years. It's the labor rates that have been, and that's what they, how they've controlled the people, is by taking your labor away from you, ripping you off, and then turning around and charging you income tax on top of that, which is totally against the law. Back to the fishing vessels, okay? I told you that basically a fishing vessel on the ocean is like a farming vessel. Well, basically that term also applies to the land. That farming vessel is a fishing vessel of the land. Mm -hmm. You're pulling your catch out of the land. So you're fishing on the land. That's what a farmer is. He's a land fisherman. I see most people wouldn't see that because they can't read between the lines. Mm -hmm. Everything is operated in commerce. Admiralty is in commerce. It is not in commercial commerce, but it stands over commercial commerce because it is just commerce. Maritime is commercial commerce. And that's why Admiralty always has jurisdiction over maritime.
The just always rules over the unjust. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, guess not, Patrick. Uh, we have to go do this now. Okay, well, hopefully people listen to this damn thing. They're right, right. But this and more than likely is going to be my last call because okay. I know this time for sure when we claim and claim our mastership and we pointed out the difference between that we are not the puppet, that we are the puppeteer behind the scene, pulling the strings for our uh, puppet, then they have no uh, claim over us. And we will bring our ships into dock and offload their cargo. Okay. Liquidate it, just like Dorothy and uh, the Wizard of Oz. But, I mean, you can go into Peter Pan. They see that had vessels in it. Pinocchio, okay? Pinocchio is a good one. Because that's the puppeteer. Until they see little Pinocchio, they see woke up. He was being controlled. Interesting. Then he became the real living little boy. He was always there, but he was in a puppeteer controlled environment. Never thought Quite a few that. movies out there about puppeteering, about puppeteers. What a few yeah. movies out there, documentary evidence about the vampire system. That's what I mean. I could have listed 50 different movies or books out here at a minimum. Really, I could probably go up to about 5,000 if I went and looked at all these things from the, the different aspects that they all apply to. They've been trying to put the information out to us. We have been the ones that did not see and did not understand. And then we've been listening to a lot of other false prophets and everything else running around out here, deceiving the living shit out of us. I came for only one thing, to gain the knowledge and understanding. That's all I ever asked for. Okay. And I had to work at it to try and get this. <laughs> and that's what you have to do, too, okay? You can't sit back and just look at somebody else's paper and expect to get an A or B or C and pass the course. Because you pass the course, then you're into the next system. You've graduated, and you don't know shit. You don't know how to protect yourself. Because you haven't taken the time and put the effort in to gain the knowledge and understanding of how the system really works and functions. But I tried to lay this all out so that you could follow the path. The man named Jesus, the puppet, Jesus, basically tried to lay the full path out 2,000 years ago. This whole scenario. I told you about the three Marys at the end. 
the merry of the state or the merry time of the state and the merry time of the religion and the merry time of the military. See, most people don't realize is that basically in the Bible, it goes from 12 years old and then all of a sudden it jumps to Jesus being 30 years old. There's 18 years of missing time frame in there. What did he do in that time frame? Well, we know one thing for sure. He had to fulfill a military obligation to the nation that he belonged to. That is one of the oldest requirements out here. And that is normally from the time frame of 18 to 25. And you can go into the Old Testament and find that documented numerous different times. And then that the military, that when they did serve, they got an extra bounty from the land. They got an extra entitlement. So none of this stuff is new. It's all old. It's older than dirt. Okay, any questions? One last time. No, sir. I know you mentioned uh, the uh, the correlation between the Book of Jonah and uh, the whale and all that, and I know it, it, it's connected. It's just that we've got to look at it a little deeper and look at it a little clearer. But the uh, the metaphor is obviously there. Yeah, he was in the belly of the whale. He was in the commercial, a maritime system of exchangement. Mm-hmm. And that's when the seas got rough and they threw him overboard. Because in the seas, the crest and the trough of the seas is basically the inflation and deflation in the monetary system. Right. That's and it why is a rough they time. call this seas in commerce. Yeah. And, you want and the he, calm seas of just commerce. God wanted him to go tell the people something, and he didn't want to do it, and so he went through all the chaos and, and the belly of the whale. Yeah. All he the ups and to, downs. Yeah, he had to basically, uh, just like... People out here right now, you have to, you're going through the suffering. You know there's something wrong, but you don't know how to put your finger on it. Okay? And then basically, he, uh, when he saw what the problem was, then he went to the king and explained it to him. And basically, that's when they stopped everything. They said, we're no longer going to persist participate in this Dead Sea monetary system. All these bankers have a false debt over you. It's false. So you stop it. It goes away. The bankers don't get anything. But as long as you keep believing they have control over you, you're giving them your labor. It's like a sit-down strike, and that's basically what it was, a three-day three sit-down strike. They brought the commercial maritime system to a dead standstill. Ray, did you have a question? I guess not. 
when you tried to ask before you overloaded severely. Was there somebody else that had another question? Ask it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have a question. Um, I know that this is all for assuming the vessel and claiming chief master of your vessel so that we can work under just commerce. I wanted to know, um, in order to do so, we just need the, to assume the office of the vessel master, but does that involve the part of the process that we have to get our COL, COLBs Authenticated to a foreign country and all of that to get the indemnity no, bond, treasure no, account. We don't have no, to, we don't have no, to. okay. No, that's that's these false prophets bullshit that they've been putting out here. Okay. So what is the purpose of that? I don't understand. Like if it's don't false profit. That. It's it's to keep you totally off guard. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Some of these guys are put in as deceivers working for uh, the bankers and everybody else to keep the people off guard. They will put people into this patriot uh, movement, if that's what you really want to call it. I don't call myself that, but basically uh, I'm just out here as a uh, one that wants to learn and gain the knowledge and understanding. But uh, these others that are out here trying to fight the system and everything, and they don't know what they're really fighting because they don't really understand the system. Yeah, we've gone down every damn different which way possible. But we had to realize that we are the puppet master behind the scene, and we have to basically put our puppet out front. See, the courts, they don't recognize you, the living, unless you come in in admiralty. And then in admiralty, you still have to have your puppet out on the stage. Right. If you don't put your puppet out there, then basically there is no show. How do you mean that? Could you explain what you meant by what you just said? Your puppet is your commercial or your uh, corporate soul person. Okay? Right. That's yeah. not you. That's right. And see, that's the one that basically when they put that uh, certificate of live birth, that baptismal certificate, and that uh, selective service item out there, they created a puppet. Okay. Now, you have to control that puppet. They also, at the same time, because this is a vessel, they and the puppet is basically the master's mate, okay, on the vessel, the right. chief or master's mate. They had to create somebody who was going to... Uh, operate the sails and the engine and everything else on the vessel. So they created a seaman or a merchant marine man okay, on, with a stuff. number. And all of those guys are numbered. Right. Okay. And yeah. they're fictions. They okay. are, they are uh, false pretenses. Okay. I see that. But how do you, when you said you have to bring the puppet with you, or you have to bring them both with you in the um, Admiralty, how how are you saying to bring them with you if if they go in so that they will be... You put it in you on your documentation, body. okay? Okay, just with the documentation, okay. Yeah, when you put, uh, and you just file your court case in, like you're going after your mortgage or whatever, that you're moving this out of the state court, say, and you tell the state court, this is being moved to Admiralty, to the federal district court. And then you take that document and you submit the charge up there to uh, Admiralty. Now, in a lot of cases, when you bring this in and say that you're moving this to Admiralty, that state court is going to dismiss this because they know that if they go into the federal district court in Admiralty, 
you can turn around and sue them for up to three times harm caused. Okay, so if if one had a um, old um, child support case where the other party's not paying, and you don't, I don't even care about the money. If I just want it to be out of there and and out of the system, so I could have it transferred over there, and then how? What would you suggest? You take this into this document now. On that page two, you would put down your marriage certificate. Also on there. Okay, this is a unique situation, um, not natural. No, it's not a unique situation. Well, I was not. There is nothing unique about any of this. Okay, it's all the same system. Okay, but I'm saying in that I wasn't. There is no marriage certificate, like because it wasn't that way. I was um, not the natural parent. Then how can they be charging you? They're charging you in fraud. No, they the didn't state charge me. was not in the marriage. Okay, they didn't charge me. Um, I was given sole custody. He owes child support like thousands and thousands of dollars. No, he He's doesn't. He well, doesn't. I, mean, I know he. I know he doesn't. But I mean, in their thing, he does. And but how I did you? Was he a child molester? Uh, no, it was a. Again, it was a unique situation. I'm not going to discuss it on the phone. But there was a reason why I was given sole custody. Many reasons. <laughs> yeah, but basically, if uh, uh, you've got custody in error, okay, in okay. a marriage, in a wedding, okay, in a wedding, not a marriage, okay, you say you don't have a marriage license, so you did not have a marriage, you had a okay. wedding. Okay. Okay, you got wed. Now, Wed means you were made into one. You were mm-hmm. supposed to be under his estate. Well, now, that wasn't the kind of thing it was, but... Now, all the child custody and all that, if the child has a certificate of live birth, he has a contract with the state. The child's upbringing is to be drawn from that certificate of live birth. Correct, I get that. If you're the, if basically that child is still underage, you can go in as the guardian and take over the master ship of that vessel of his vessel away from the judge. You follow me? Yes. Okay. You would just turn around and you come in. If you're over the age of 25 or basically whatever, uh, you're of age, you can come in as the guardian over your offspring and take control of their vessel away from the court. The court's not going to abandon that. Right until they turn 21, then they will basically vacate that office. But you can remove them from that office as the guardian. Okay, so so I see that process, but how do you practically, you know, apply it as far as you've got to think them? about it? Okay. I can't tell you all well, the answers. I mean, what I'm saying is I see the process. I don't see how taking it from move. I, I know where to move it into Admiralty. It's you just, take it to the federal district court. You write Admiralty on it, and you handwrite it out and send it up to the clerk of the court at the what, federal district court. Right. You don't I need a court to, case. Okay, you don't need it. Right. You don't have to pay any filing fees in Admiralty. You are the prince or princess of America. So you don't have to carry over, like, the um, case number and all that thing to do that? Is it- you would list it on there, but this is coming out of state court 
But okay. you're not coming in in civil or criminal right. situation. Right. You're coming in in admiralty. So you could just list that and then their birth certificate um, information. You don't need to put a birth certificate in there. Oh. Okay. Okay. You just need to come in and basically, uh, but in uh, the situation, like the page two that I have up there, you would just have to modify that as that you're coming in uh, as the taking the master of the vessel, of this, uh, your child's vessel, mm -hmm. away from the court. Mm -hmm. You have superior authority. You are the prince or princess of America. That judge is just a, a public servant. He's sitting there holding that office until you come of age. You follow that? Right. I do. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And basically, you might have to just modify the flow chart, but uh, you've got right. something, you've got a template to start working with. Mm -hmm. But you need to take care of yourself first before you can go after anybody else. And you well, get yourself taken care of, you're going to have more damn money and you know what to do with. Again, that isn't... I was just trying to get everything out of the system. That's all. I don't. I, yeah. I really well, don't to try and do too much at one time. Okay. Well, like, would you suggest do that step first because it's part? It's connecting me to that system. No, you have to okay. take care of yourself first. Okay. Okay. Right. Until you learn learn how to love yourself, you mm -hmm. can't love anybody else. Right. It's all about love. So you got to put your child aside until you take care of yourself. That sounds hard-hearted uh, no, from I... the lies that everybody's been told out here. But that's the true fact. Until you learn how to love yourself... You cannot give love to anybody else. And right. it's all about love. Right. I think I was um, missing the connecting point because I, I thought I heard you say, and maybe it, I misheard you. I thought you said that if you had any other cases out there to bring them over, and I thought that was But it's of, not your you know, case, okay? I, well... Okay, that's not your case yet. That's your child's case. It, you have to clean up, and basically when you send this in with your items, okay, to take control of your vessels, and you submit it into the Baileys, they will terminate, and you order the termination of all the uh, false pretense seamen and merchant men, crew hirings, mm -hmm. ter charters of demise certificates and commercial contracts to be liquidated, those baileys will take care of everything you've got. All right. I heard that before. I didn't know if that was still the case now. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. They will take care of all that, and if they need to, they will turn to the other uh, U.S. Marshals there that are the Bay Luffs and order them to go out and seize the property from whoever is holding it. Like the state, uh, you got a certificate of title to a vehicle. The state is holding that full value for that vehicle. In an insurance policy. The original, are you correct, the original? No, no forget oh. the original. I'm talking about the value. Well, value. We're talking about cargo, the monetary, the the real asset value. Okay? They've turned around and put insurance policies against that. They've oh, written bonds against that right. vehicle. Okay, okay, I see, yeah. 
So that vehicle was totally paid, but you turned around and paid out of your back pocket, too. Mm. So you paid twice. You're just coming in and getting one of the payments back. Oh, I see. How come? And Can that will be taken that? care of by the Baileys when you submit and you give them that contract for the uh, certificate of title. See, I've got also a salvage title. That salvage title for the vehicle has the same value, $20,900 on it. And see, that's a salvage right or a salvage lien for that amount of value. Okay. Was that from when you salvaged it earlier when you were working it from a different... Um, well, that's process. when the damn uh, uh, state was trying to salvage it, and basically they were trying yeah. to rip me off. Okay. Now, the state is the biggest whore in this damn country. Yeah. If, if somebody's just uh, lost their house, got, got it sold out from under them very recently, can they use this uh, uh, admiralty approach to negate that action? Yes, they'll put that certificate of title to that house down on their document and basically let the bailiffs, bailees, go after it. Okay, okay. Just yeah. put it on page two. And then you turn around and you go out and buy a brand new house. Yeah, okay. And you buy it free and clear, and you don't register it back into uh, the public system. You keep it out of the commercial system. You don't go out and get insurance policy on the house. If the house burns down, you've got money to go buy another one. You stay the hell away from all insurance policies. Think about it. How many houses really burn down in a year in this country? But how, uh, ma- how many people are paying uh, three, $4,000 in insurance on a damn house? The insurance companies only paying out like maybe 1%. So they're making out like great dates. Right. So, you keep all that insurance money, if you want to, just put it in a separate account off to the side, and basically, lo and behold, in about 10 years, you're going to have more than enough to buy that house over again. Mm-hmm. So then does this um, also, in the um, Assume Office of Vessel Master document, where you have a list of documents that you provide to take out of the system, the certificate of title for the home would also be included in that list. Is that correct? Yeah. You add as many things as you've got. I just tried to give you an example of what I had. I don't have a house. Okay? I'm living on my... Uh, Dad's farm estate. But I will go after his estate as soon as I learn to love myself first. Right. So if people had um, business license and from, you know, different, maybe some. Um, self-employed businesses or corporations or whatever, that, you're saying they will take care of that part. You don't have to list that, those licenses or per, permits or that sort of thing. From a different state? I don't state? have it myself. Well, no, I'm just thinking and hypothetically. I don't really have my own example to go by, but I'm just thinking of people that I know that have like, quite a few people that have their own business and they have their in um you know a license for it the permit for it for the state um you know they yes, they're going to have to try and turn that business into a private enterprise okay okay private enterprise is out of the public system okay. right 
And then you don't have, you you set up your own bank account in the private. Mm -hmm. Okay? But there again, I wouldn't use any damn banks. Exactly, yeah. I would start using lawful money. And basically, uh, you can even put, you can if you want to use a bank, uh, just use the bank as a safety deposit box. Well, if people research it, they can do their own um, private family banks. You can create your own family banks or among people you trust. You can, do, you can use the private banks or the public banks, but just put your money into, go in and buy one of the biggest boxes, safety deposit boxes they have in there. Go to the treasury and get your just barter exchangement and put it into the bank safety deposit box. You can visit the bank every day and go to your safety deposit box and take funds out of it. Well, when you're saying uh, private banks, few and far between, and even so, if they have any type of um, insurances or whatever through... Uh, They're not going to have any insurance. Or, or what is it? They have to have protection or something with FDIC or something, or no? Not because for a safety those... deposit box. Oh, well, okay, because I thought those new executive orders or whatever were saying that, hey, we can go in anytime, anywhere, or maybe it was the... the no, only if you got a checking account and you can basically revoke that uh, FDIC insurance. Uh, The bank won't like it, no. and the bank may not want to deal with you. That's why you primarily just go in and get a safety deposit box. You pay for uh, basically uh, the storage in that bank. Now, some banks may want you to have an account to have a safety deposit box, but... Uh, I don't know, watching the movie uh, uh, Born Identity, uh, the banks over in Switzerland, they just operated with safety deposit boxes. That's what initially was supposed to be set up in this country. Uh, in uh, back, I forget where in the hell I found that. That was back somewhere in uh, the 1840s, 1860s. They set up the national uh, safety deposit uh, system. Okay, in uh, D.C., and there's, it's uh, still there, okay? And uh, you could basically put your assets into one of those safety deposit boxes and then draw it out. You could put your bearer bonds in there and then take off, take the bearer bond out, draw, go down to the treasury, have so much taken out against that bearer bond, turned into a barter currency of exchange, put the bearer bond back in the safety deposit box, and then you've got your cash. So you've got to start thinking about how real uh, commerce is operated, and it's all on barter. But you don't need insurance. You don't need the checking account and all these other things. There are other ways around it. Right. Okay? okay? Any other questions? Yes, Patrick. Um, you mentioned about going to the Treasury Department. You called it a just borrowers. I didn't get the rest of it. You could go to uh, the window, okay, the conversion window, and basically with the bearer bond, and they would notate on the back of the bearer bond a withdrawal of so much from that bearer bond. Say, like, if you had a bearer bond for $100 million and you wanted to take a million out, they would basically 
uh, market down that a million was deducted from this. So now that bearer bond is only worth uh, ninety nine million dollars. Uh, okay. And they would notarize or whatever, seal that, and then basically you would turn around, put the bearer bond back in your safety deposit box, and then you'd have a million dollars of cash to go running around. And it's debt-free money because you converted a real asset because that bearer bond is either going to be in silver back bearer bond or a gold back bearer bond. And you're taking out a real asset and converting it into the just exchangement. And that's when they will take their tidings. Like in the Bible, all the stuff that basically they turn tidings in going to the temple, it wasn't tidings. That was the maritime of the banker's turned around and put that in there. The real correct term that they were taking to the temple was their titles. They were surrendering their titles to be bartered out for the just exchangement. That's when all the fat and the the hooves and everything else were cut away from that uh, title to give you the lawful substance in return. Because it never did make any damn sense that you would set up a pristine temple and then go in and start cutting animals up in it to where you'd have all the flies and the maggots and everything else floating around. Stink. I mean, you'd have shit all over the floor and everything else if you were coming in there cutting bulls and goats up. No. To kill an animal, you do that outside, away from your living quarters. And I'm sure that they wouldn't allow you to bring a goat into the courthouse, uh, the county courthouse or even the federal courthouse, and start cutting it up. Because here in America, that is the temples of America, is the courthouses. But yet they're also operating as a houseboat in the process for the maritime commercial corporations that are operating in those courthouses today. So there's more going on in those courthouses than uh, you know, okay? Any other questions? Okay, Tom, go ahead and call okay. tonight. Well, let's, let's adhere to this being the last call. That's a hopeful sign. Well, hopefully it is. Hopefully as soon as yeah. I get this faxed off in the morning, that'll be it. Okay. Thank you very much, Patrick. Okay. Later. Thank Bye. You. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick.